Hey, what's up, good people? I apologize for the disheveled look, my hair, and my you know, tired eyes. I'm pretty worn out. It's pretty late, but I just want to get a video out for you guys. Now, if you notice in the video title, it says Pwned. So, what is Pwned? Uh, Pwned actually stands for Sykes Weekly Nerf Dosage. And I wanted to give my channel this name, Pwned. Uh, just so that you know I could create an identity for my channel it's not like a different segment like Atani does you know like how he does his power videos purchases of the week this is just pwned I guess everything to do with nerf and then it also forces me to at least keep a constant you know update of at least one video per week and uh, you know sometimes I actually upload like a bunch of videos during the week and they can be quite low in quality or low in content so I guess um, by keeping it to a weekly certain date or at least once a week I'm able to give you guys better content you know like time for mods and time for reviews you know time for unboxings and stuff like that so I should be able to cram a bit more into a video as opposed to just one separate like unboxing or something like that alright so um so therefore uh, since I've now officially or I want to officially call my channel Pwned here is the intro so that's just a really quick intro uh, it's nothing special just something that you know to give you an identity like when you watch the porn videos and you know okay alright so yeah first thing first I want to show you guys something uh, especially for the Singaporean uh, nerfers um, we in Singapore you know when you have it, your Apple ID I'm um, talking about the Apple Store and iTunes. When you have your Apple ID, you have to sign up for a Singaporean account, and uh, therefore you have to log in automatically to the Singaporean iTunes account. And you are not able to find the Nerf um, app in the App Store. So the only way for you to get a Nerf app is, um, you know, to hack your account or trick your account to think it's in a US iTunes yeah store. So for those of you guys in the US, good job. I guess you guys are lucky. But anyway. So I managed to hack mine, I suppose, and uh, I do have the Nerf app over here. Alright, and uh, I guess I wanted to show you guys the augmented reality part. Now, this app is kind of crappy. I guess you just, you know, get to test the blasters. As you can tell, the stupid uh, theme song. But you can see the blasters and you can, you know, basically just take a look. It's kind of like a promo, I guess, for those people who are, you know, a little bit interested in Nerf. I do not really know what nerf is about or what kind of blasters they are so the cool thing is this part it says scan for more and uh, this is the part where it says that you know you scan an airstrike raven or vortex limitron retail box to unlock their respective stages so these are like the two easter egg um, blasters that have to be scanned uh, in order for you to be able to use them in this game and uh, I actually tried it out at the store uh, it's pretty cool and I want to show this part this video to you guys that you don't need to go to a store to be able to uh, scan for these blasters you can just do so with a high res picture and I've done so on my computer so I guess uh, I'll take you guys to see that in a short while alright um, you know, might as well just do it now so here we go alright so here I am with my iPhone in front of me it's gonna be a bit difficult for me to film with you know, one hand on this camera and one hand with my iPhone but I'm gonna try my best so I'm gonna load up the Nerf app right now oops fat fingers and I can't reach it I've already turned off the sound because that sound is just gonna repeat over and over and over again so now um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna just load up this app over here and I'm gonna click scan for more All right, and on my PC I've already loaded up a picture of the Raven and I'll be showing you guys Lumitron so here it says uh, scan oh, I know you guys can't really read it because of the light but yeah scan and end strike Raven or Vortex Lumitron retail box to unlock their respective stages like I mentioned earlier on in the video so click OK and uh, as you can see now my iPhone is just uh, another camera for whatever's in the background as you can see right so you see that that piece over there that is the uh, Snapfire 8 shell so you can see it in this camera over here alright so now I'm gonna just turn it over to my computer screen and you can see that uh, the bird pops up a little moving Raven which is pretty cool that's what we call augmented reality it scans a box and it creates a 3D uh, prop or floating uh, display of the Raven so as you can see the real thing doesn't have anything and on my iPhone yes we have it alright so now I'm gonna just put it here like so alright hopefully that you guys can see I'm gonna leave my phone standing here 
Alright, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this over to a Lumitron. Alright, so now you can see the Lumitron. Yes, I know it's blurring the camera, but uh, I'm going to take my iPhone right now. And I'm going to just show you guys. Okay, so here we go. iPhone. Oops, I'm going to grab it nicely. Okay, so iPhone. You can see my, my vest. I'm going to bring it over to the monitor. And bam, you can see now the Lumitron appears. So that's the cool thing I wanted to show you guys. Yep, <laughs> that you don't need to be in a shop actually physically, you know, have a real box in order for you to perform this uh, unlock. So it's just a little tip for you guys, alright. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, go have fun. Peace. Okay, welcome back. So, yeah, I hope that you guys found that segment interesting. Alright, uh, it's kind of sad that you're not able to at least scan more than one blaster at a time. But anyway, on to the next part of the video. I have with me a modified Leonard Max Shot. This Max Shot is the same one that I actually took out from the unboxing. You can click this annotation to see the unboxing. And uh, yeah, it was a lemon. Now the good thing is it was it wasn't like um, an important piece that broke off. It was actually one of the I guess nubs that broke off and it didn't make sense because the nub was yeah it wasn't even in contact with anything important so that nub was uh, loose after I was creating that uh, you know that sound and uh, the rattling sound and it, it would get in the way of the priming uh, yeah the priming action so what happens here is uh, I'm gonna run through the mod right now okay as you can see cosmetically there's not much changes to this thing in fact there are no changes to this thing except for the front and you realize that there's a coupler now I'm not doing it like how Atani did his, I uh, did it a completely different way. On the inside, I've actually double springed it and I added a stock recon spring. So I guess I have that much extra firepower. And um, as you can see, the machine screws, there's one here and there's actually one on the underside inside here. So that's uh, basically how I fasten this coupler on. And I would like to say that uh, the stock stem there's this actually a, a little stem on the inside um, once you remove the outer layer for the um, you know for the arrow attachment uh, there's a little stem on the inside that you have to cut down in order for you to fit a couple on but that stem is almost exactly the same as CPVC a half inch CPVC both uh, outer and inner diameters that was quite cool that was I guess that was the reason why I was able to twist fit a streamline duct in in my unboxing video alright so now um, what I did was actually I kind of made like a something like a universal coupler on the inside is actually a half inch PVC coupler uh, hammered into a 15mm or half inch PVC coupler so now I'm just gonna give you a very quick firing demo because that's all that I did to this blaster and this blaster you know has some serious crazy power uh, firing darts so now I'm gonna fire off uh, first with the CPVC barrel this is by no means the correct barrel length this is five inches and I it's really too short but it's what I have on hand right now and I don't want to cut up my one foot long CBVC uh, strip right now this tube so I'm just gonna load this no I'm not gonna load this done because there's a metal piece I'm gonna load this Stefan in let me just get this tape out sorry guys I'm just doing this uh, a bit unprepared I'm a little bit tired so I'm not thinking really straight right now Anyway, so yeah, it's a white foam Stefan and uh, just load it in like so into the CBVC barrel, prime the blaster. So you can see how simple it is to prime, just uh, put it in. So you see, pretty good. CBVC, fire off. Whoa, that's really strong. Uh, you have no fear in twisting it out because it's all secured in by uh, machine screws already. So now for the outer coupler I'm actually going to use a 7 inch uh, I'm sorry this is 8 inch sorry this is an 8 inch um, schedule 80 PVC barrel and I'm going to put the red colored Stefan inside prime the blaster the same way as you can tell priming is actually really very simple and it's it doesn't take much strength at all and uh, this should be a better barrel length right, I'm not saying that it's the best barrel material barrel material is always about uh, your dart fits in the barrel so that was even more powerful and uh, I guess 7 inches or 8 inches on a CBVC barrel would do wonders so just let you guys see the cosmetics of this blaster after I've modified it first I did not remove the stickers and the orange the orange caps at the back are still intact but this piece over here and this one 
and uh, I didn't modify the trigger I didn't extend it so it's still the same small little trigger pull now uh, if you guys actually thinking of um, try, I'm trying to look for a hammer right now but I can't find one if you guys are actually thinking of modifying a leather max shot now a good tip for removing this cap would be to get yourself a claw hammer latch it on the side yank it up slowly then you slowly pry it out uh, this way as you can tell I have very very little cosmetic damage to this area alright so I actually picked the tip up uh, by reading, I think reading off the Nerf Haven forums. Now I'm not gonna tell you guys much about range. I would say that this thing hits about 60 to 70 feet right now because I actually added a spring on the inside, so it might be hitting 75. Uh, the reason why I'm kind of veering away from range test from now on, I guess uh, Daniel Beaver was having a little debate, I guess a little chat with me. And uh, actually not Ben Daniel Bieber, it was also Taya Kitty. So uh, when I posted up the write-up on Nerf Haven for my previous video, um, the Duo Force, one of the previous videos, um, they were asking me why am I not going to do a range test. So this is my reasoning, so that my viewers, you guys, will actually know. Um, well, when you do a range test, there are many factors that people will, I guess, uh, point out you know to try and disprove you or disagree with your range test or your mode of range test or whatever method you choose like for example uh, I would usually conduct my range test in the car park uh, with a hundred foot long measuring tape but people will argue saying that it's not true ranges because you get dart skip and um, if you were to fire or you know in order I mean in order to prevent dart skip you have to shoot like maybe conduct a range test at a field for example so you know darts will land in the grass and not have any skip but then again people will just argue with you saying that no it's subjected to tailwind so the wind will blow in your direction and you get even extra range even better ranges you know so so many factors and nobody's gonna be happy so there's not much of a point you know trying to find a perfect condition so I you know in order for you to be able to conduct a perfect range test I suppose would be for you to be able to find a hundred foot long room that is carpeted or has grass and it's enclosed with no tailwind and then you conduct a firing test there but even when you conduct your firing or your range test there people are going to say things like are you sure you held your blaster exactly parallel to the ground uh, how tall are you you know and stuff like that and even if you use a crony or chronograph and you uh, fire through and take the FPS reading it doesn't translate directly to range but then again according to Daniel Beaver it is probably the most legit way of measuring the power of your blaster right now so I guess he's right in a sense but for me uh, I guess I believe in um, you know practicality over anything else and accuracy is more important so if I'm able to hit a target at 50 feet or 70 feet depending on the power I want on my blaster like 10 out of 10 times then I would say that that blaster is good enough it can hit at least a 70 foot range or it can hit at least a 50 foot range so that's my take on it I don't know what you guys, uh, you know, um, ideals are. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything, just put in the comments below. Uh, or if you guys, have, you know, what just want to say your piece, it's open to discussion. You know, but I don't think I'll be actually conducting any more official range tests. I'll just fire off from my room to the kitchen, and from here to the end of my kitchen is about about 50 feet, about 45 to 50 feet, and if I can hit. The small little toaster at the back of the kitchen, right at the end, I'm more than satisfied. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so once again, thanks for watching this episode of Pwned. This is episode 1. Stay tuned for more in the future. Every week or, or every Nerf video I'm going to put up will be a Pwned video. So it's that's not a segment. It's just the way I'm going to name my videos from now on. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a good evening. Have a good week ahead. Peace.